Hey guys, all grey here. I was doing my usual bit at lunchtime, having a look on YouTube, and I discovered that uh, Dragon Age Keep is now on the go. Which is the program that, that that's linked to Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age Two. It kind of imports your saves and gives you a chance to change decisions that you made along the way, and I think it's in it. It's looking forward to Dragon Inquisition coming along. Now, I have tried to do this video three times, so I do know what I'm doing here. Um, but for some reason, it, using shadow play, I was getting so far along, it was recording my voice fine, and then it just cuts off, and so does the, uh, the music and commentary from the game itself, from the, the site. So... I'm trying it again, well, this time I'm using Fraps, I'm hoping this is going to work. So we'll sync data, again. There we go, it's syncing. Blood Dragon Armour. Seventy-six of one oh nine. Oh, no, I obviously didn't do as well as I thought I did. <laughs> so yeah, it's linking all these in from the, the games when I used to play it on the Xbox 360. Which I don't even use anymore. So it's handy that they keep the records somewhere. Right, one custom hero detected. Okay. Choose a hero. Oh, oh. That can't be... Can't be all grey. Really? Okay, I didn't think I'd use that name in those days. And choose a hero. Four custom heroes detected. There should be more than one on the other one as well. I think, I'd, I, think I did it on every single uh, class, so... Nick Hawk, that looks like it's one. I'll approve this hero as well. Your Dragon Age records. Right, so what's your story? Now, as this goes along, you do get the option to change the decisions that you made. So I will pull that up. I'm not sure if it interrupts the commentary. I'll try and do it without. But what's your story? So I will keep my mouth shut from now until the end, which is about 17 minutes, I think. Here we go, guys. If you believe the stories, mankind's pride gave rise to the Darkspawn. Countless in number and toxic to all life, Darkspawn search endlessly for an archdemon. When they find one, Darkspawn armies surge up from their corrupt barrows beneath the ground, and a blight begins. Grey Wardens are the only warriors capable of destroying an Archdemon, and history always honors the one who sacrifices all to kill the beast. In the Fifth Blight, the Warden was the hero of Ferelden, youngest child of Ferelden's powerful Terran Kusland. Betrayal saw the Kusland's ancestral castle burn, and the Terran and his wife slain. Duncan, a Grey Warden, helped the young noble escape to a new life with the Wardens. The allied Ferelden and Grey Warden forces met in Ostagar, where King Kaelin's armies and a host of Wardens gathered, ready to destroy the Darkspawn. But Valor turned to despair as Loghain betrayed his king. Kaelin's forces were slaughtered, and the South was lost. The hero, now a full-fledged Grey Warden, survived with the aid of Flemeth, the mysterious Witch of the Wilds. Joined by Flemeth's daughter, Morrigan, and a Grey Warden named Alistair, the hero set out to build an army strong enough to abolish the Blight. With the traitorous Loghain now seated on Ferelden's throne, the Warden sought help from the influential Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. However, they arrived in Redcliffe to find the town under siege, as each... Right, okay, it's, it does interrupt it slightly. Uh, right, help Redcliffe? Yes, I did help Redcliffe. Night, undead rose in waves and assailed the battered village. With the hero's help, 
The people of Redcliffe stood fast against the undead horde. The Wardens reached Arl Eamon's castle only to find the Arl lying at the edge of death and his court fallen into madness. To save his father's life, Eamon's young son, Connor, had made a deal with him. Yes, I do believe in my save. Connor died. He didn't survive. Demon, and quickly fallen victim to its possession. Connor's life was sacrificed to end the demonic threat to Redcliffe. Yeah, that's fine. But deals with demons are never straightforward. The demon agreed only to save Eamon's life, not restore him to health. Arl Eamon needed a miracle to recover. The hero located an urn containing the sacred ashes of Andraste, which were said to cure any ailment. The urn was protected by ancient traps, tests of will, and a dragon-worshipping cult that wanted to twist the urn's power to its own ends. Urn not poisoned. The urn remained pure, but mysteriously disappeared after the Wardens departed. Only the temple dedicated to it still stands. With a pinch of the ashes, the hero restored the Arl to health. Informed of Loghain's treachery, Eamon swore his political and military support. The circles of Magi are bound by oath to aid the Grey Wardens in times of blight. However, Lake Kalanad's tower could offer little help. One of its mages, Uldred, had become possessed by a pride demon and was twisting other circle mages into abominations. Yes, I supported the mages. I believe I did do it for the Templars on one of the later saves, just to see what it was like, because I did experience as many of the endings that I could find, so... But on the original save, I did do the major supported, so we'll continue with that. The hero fought to the top of the tower and defeated Aldred, saving the remaining mages. Grateful for their lives, the mages joined the Warden's army. The allies gained at the Circle were not the only soldiers to join the Warden's forces, however. Dalish Elves don't usually make alliances, but even deep hatred can be set aside in the face of oblivion. An ancient curse was destroying Ferelden's largest Dalish clans, turning the Elves into werewolves. Zathrian, the clan's keeper, claimed that the cure required the heart of the great wolf, Witherfang. Years before, Zathrian himself had afflicted a group of humans with the curse, that now ravaged his clan. Um, yes, once again, I have experienced all sides of this, but I did broker a piece on the original one, so we'll continue with that. As long as that. he lived, the curse endured. The hero freed the werewolves from the long-standing curse, and the Dalis joined the Warden's forces. Blights may happen hundreds of years apart, but the dwarves who live below the surface of Thetis fight Darkspawn every day. No one is better schooled in battling Darkspawn than the warriors of Orzammar, except perhaps their allies of old, the Grey Wardens. The hero arrived in Orzammar in the wake of King Endrin's death to find political factions fighting for control of the Dwarven capital. Only the vote of a venerated paragon could break the deadlock to elect a ruler and order the Dwarves to honor their Grey Warden treaty and join the battle against the New Light. The hero set off to find a paragon named Branca, who had disappeared into the Deep Roads in search of a legendary artifact, the Anvil of the Void, created by the renowned smith Caradon to forge mighty war golems. The hero... Uh, yes, I did side with uh, Caradon. The hero helped Caradon destroy the Anvil of the Void along with the dark secrets that could trap a living soul inside a mechanical construct. The hero emerged from the deep roads with a master-forged crown to bestow the Paragon's favor upon whichever rival candidate would be crowned king. Balin, the youngest son of King Andrin who was suspected of foul play, or Haramont, the aging traditionalist backed by the Dwarven Assembly, Now here's where I differ. I know that on my original save, I went with Haramont. 
does Balin was a bit of an a-hole to be honest with you. <laughs> so yeah, I went with Aramont on the original save, so I'm going to change that one. Lord Haramont claimed the crown of Orzammar. His traditionalist values keep dwarves first in all things, and safely as far underground as possible. With Dwarden's strength now bolstering the Warden's army, the hero had to deal with Loghain so Ferelden could stand unified against the Dark Spawn before the Blight swallowed the world. The kingdom of Ferelden stood divided. While some nobles supported Loghain's regency, others condemned his inaction against the Darkspawn. Civil war brewed, and Arl Eamon called a landsmate in hopes of curtailing the conflict and removing Loghain from the throne. Uh, Loghain was executed... Uh, yes, he was executed by me. Loghain was found guilty of treason, and the hero carried out his execution in Denerim's palace. As the Warden's united army massed in Redcliffe, the Darkspawn overran Denerim, laying siege to Ferelden's capital city. The hero's army fought valiantly through Denerim and broke the Darkspawn siege. On Fort Dracon's highest tower, the hero's strongest allies fought alongside the Warden in a final heroic battle against the massive Archdemon. And once again, yes, in the original save, the Warden killed the Archdemon, but in other saves, I did let Alistair kill it, and I did with Morrigan as well. Uh, so I'm going to change this one, actually, because I favoured the Dark Ritual, because this means Morrigan's has the baby, yes? No, no, okay, we'll, we'll stick with the original. I've done the original save, so we'll stick with the original save. Warden killed the Archdemon. Oh. The hero of Ferelden paid the ultimate price. The life of a Grey Warden given to kill the Archdemon and end the Blight. With no Archdemon to lead them, the Darkspawn scattered. Most fled underground, still teeming in number and always seeking a new Archdemon to awaken. The shattered kingdom of Ferelden embarked on a long journey to recovery. In the Blight's aftermath, strong leadership was crucial. Alistair, King Caelan's half-brother, and Queen Honora, Caelan's widow and daughter of Loghain, joined in a political union. Yep, yeah, that's how I left it. Together, they ushered Ferelden into a new era. Ferelden still stands, as obstinate and resolute as the Dog Lords ever are. But the events of the Fifth Blight loom over it as the nation rebuilds. For people across Thetis, legends of the hero of Ferelden remain the nation's brightest beacons of hope during its darkest times. It all began in Kirkwall, the fall of Knight Commander Meredith, the Kunari uprising, and of course, the Chantry's destruction and the onset of Mage Rebellion. One person always stood amidst the swirling chaos, Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall. The Hawk family fled Lothering, refugees from the Blight. Leandra, mother of the champion and siblings Bethany and Carver, hoped to find refuge at her family's estate in Kirkwall, far to the north. Not quite sure. No, Hawk was not a mage, that's correct, he was a, he was a fighter. While Hawk had no magical abilities, the champion was at the heart of events that ultimately led to the Mage Rebellion. The Hawks escaped the Blight with the help of Aveline Valen, a warrior and family friend. It's said that the family was also aided by Flemeth, the notorious Witch of the Wilds. Hawk's brother, Carver, never reached the Free Marches. He was killed by Darkspawn while protecting his family. The family's first years in Kirkwall were difficult. Leandra's brother Gamlin had lost the family fortune. The Hawks lived in poverty, forced to indenture themselves in return for entrance to the city. Hmm. I'm not sure I remember which one I did there. 
think I joined the mercenaries. No, it must have been, it must have been the smugglers. Yeah, okay. To pay off the debt, Hawk was forced to work for a gang of smugglers. All the while, Hawk and Bethany did their best to hide Bethany's magic from the Templars. Opportunity eventually struck in the form of a dwarf named Bartran Tethras, who was planning an expedition to the Deep Roads. It was a long shot, but with gold gained from the expedition, Hawk could free the family from its criminal creditors and further Templar scrutiny. Hawk met a rogue Grey Warden named Anders, who possessed detailed maps of the Deep Roads. These maps were crucial to the expedition's success. Once Hawk obtained them, everything else fell quickly into place. Afraid to lose another sibling, Hawk insisted that Bethany stay in Kirkwall rather than accompany the expedition. Hawk did find ancient dwarven treasure, but the group also stumbled upon a statuette formed from a strange red lyrium. I really don't remember what I did the first time around on that, but we'll leave it at that, prove the answer. Upon returning to the surface, Hawk found Templars taking Bethany away. Her magic had been discovered. She joined a mage circle soon after. The gold Hawk recovered from the deep roads brought back Leandra's stately childhood home in Hightown. The Hawks had barely settled into their new home when Leandra was murdered. A deeply sinister and twisted killing. Hawk hunted down Quentin, the blood mage responsible, but could not prevent Leandra's death. Leandra's tragic death was part of a critical problem facing Kirkwall. Rising tension between the city's mages, who felt increasingly oppressed, and Templars, who grew increasingly suspicious of their activities. Adding to the strain, a large contingent of Kunari had also established themselves in Kirkwall, much to the growing discomfort of the city's rulers. After their dreadnought was shipwrecked many years before, a group of stranded Kunari were allowed to remain in a cordoned off area in Lone Town. As time passed, the Kunari made no effort to return home and offered no explanation about why they remained. Tensions rose to a breaking point. Revered Mother Patrice convinced the Kunari were a threat to the Chantry's faith incited violence between the Kunari and the Kirkwall populace. Hawk knew that Patrice would bring about unnecessary conflict. Though the champion tried to stop her, Patrice orchestrated the murder of Seamus Dumar, a Viscount's son and a recent convert to the Kune. When her crime was discovered, a Kunari assassin killed her. After Seamus was murdered, the Arashak of the Kunari group lost patience with the humans of Kirkwall. They would now submit to the Kuhn or die. The Kunari struck hard and fast. They took the palace in Hightown and beheaded the Viscount to immediately quash any resistance. Aided by Knight Commander Meredith and First Enchanter Orsino, Hawk reached the palace and stood toe to toe with the fearsome Kunari leader. Uh, must have been that, I don't remember Hawk anything else. fought the Kunari leader. The fierce battle resulted in the Arashok's death and the liberation of Kirkwall from its brief occupation. The Kunari quickly withdrew from the city entirely. Hawk saved Kirkwall and earned the grudging respect of the city's Templars, mages, and nobility, along with the title that history remembers, the Champion of Kirkwall. Kirkwall's problems were still not over, however. After Viscount Dumar's death, Knight Commander Meredith took power and blocked all attempts to appoint a new Viscount. Under Meredith's command, the Templars tightened their grip on the mages, planning to suppress what Meredith saw as a growing rebellion. Anders, who spent years fighting for justice and freedom for his fellow mages, saw that the time for negotiation was past. He destroyed Kirkwall's chantry killing hundreds, including Grand Cleric Elthina. This single act began a rebellion that spread from circle to circle, 
until all circles of Magi had risen up in defiance against Chantry rule. Though Anders had done the unforgivable, something stayed the champion's hand. Anders survived the day, although many others did not. Fighting spread swiftly through the city. Some mages rebelled openly, many of them succumbing to possession. Templars turned their swords on mages who rebelled and on those who did not. As First Enchanter Orsino refused to bend to the Templars, Knight Commander Meredith demanded that every mage in Kirkwall be put to the sword. Hawk saved many mages from Templar blades, keeping them from succumbing to possession or the temptations of blood magic. In the end, however, Hawk was forced to strike down Orsino, who had betrayed his own values by resorting to blood magic himself. The battle proved one thing. Knight Commander Meredith had gone mad. Hawk saw the truth of it when Meredith unsheathed her sword and the red lyrium idol from the deep roads was embedded within it. The blade fueled her hatred and paranoia as it had for months. After a horrific battle, the red lyrium of the Knight Commander's sword consumed her as she died. Meredith became a statue, her face a frozen mask of horror. Little is known of the champion since that final battle. However, Hawk's story lives on in legend and song. Memories of the indelible changes the champion of Kirkwall brought to the face of Thetis. So there we have it, guys. That's my story in Dragon Age so far. Uh, I'm not sure if that carries over to Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, if it does, I will have to make some changes because I do want Morrigan to have a child. So uh, I'd have to change that. Uh, well, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, if you do want to be part of the Dragon Age Keep, it's there, dragonagekeep.com. You can do your own story. I thank you very much for watching. This is All Grace signing off. And don't forget, if you like the videos, please like and subscribe. Thanks.